This is not a death spiral, but if you decide you want to be an actuary, you could find yourself in the middle of a death spiral literally overnight. Okay, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. Nothing in insurance happens that quickly. Oh, wait, well, I guess some things do, but not this. You can think of health insurance like a big pot of money that every policyholder contributes to. And then if a, an expensive health issue arises, then you're able to take money from the pot. But if you're someone that's 70 years old, then you're probably much more likely to need to take money from the pot for a health issue than a 20 year old, for example. So shouldn't you contribute more? Well, that's exactly where the problem arises. There's this thing that can happen in insurance, and for the purposes of this video, I'll call it a death spiral, but it's also very well known as adverse selection. So let's assume that an insurance company offers insurance to a large group of people. They price this insurance based on the average health of the group overall. So let's say our group of pom-poms has an average health of six out of 10. So some are in better health and others are lower. It doesn't matter whether the person is healthy, unhealthy, older, younger, smoker, non-smoker, everyone pays the same rate. And that means that the healthy people that are not making many claims, they're actually overpaying, paying more than their fair share. While the people that are really unhealthy making lots of claims, they're actually underpaying or paying a lot less than they should be. Now the healthiest people say, hey, I'm paying all this money in premiums, but I could go over to this insurance company and pay less for the same insurance. And then they leave. The parenting books say that kids will listen better if you pretend to make inanimate objects talk. As you can tell, I've become quite the expert at it. Because the original pricing assumed an average health of six out of 10, now that we have fewer healthy people, we're actually going to assume an average health of five out of 10. And because of that, it means that premiums need to increase because we expect when there are a higher percentage of unhealthy people that we're going to see more claims. Naturally, premiums need to increase. And when that happens, again, the healthiest people in the group say, what, another increase? This is too much. I can go get cheaper insurance over here. I don't need this, I'm healthy. Then premiums need to increase again until all the healthy people have left and it's just a pool of unhealthy people, very unhealthy people that are only paying these crazy high premiums because they probably have no other choice than to do so. This could lead to the insurance product and the company struggling. The premiums likely become unaffordable for many and are no longer enough to cover the substantial claims. In order for insurance to work, you need some people paying paying premiums but not making many claims. It's the law of large numbers. On an extreme scale, a death spiral or adverse selection actually happened with Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. By the way, if you have found this video helpful so far, could you please give it a thumbs up to let me know and also so that it can spread to other people that might find this kind of stuff interesting? Thank you so, so much. Now back to Obamacare. Participating insurers were forced to offer health coverage to anyone that wanted it and everyone would pay the exact same premium no matter how old you are, no matter how healthy you were, no matter what the circumstances were. Well, in initial pricing, actuaries assumed that the risk pool, the group of people that was being insured, was healthier than it actually turned out to be. And they knew this because the premiums that were coming in were not enough to cover the substantial claims that were being made. So because of this, premiums had to continue to increase more and more. And as premiums increased, more and more people decided, okay, I'm just gonna cancel my insurance. I'm gonna pay the penalty that the government requires of me and I'm gonna not have the insurance because that's going to be cheaper than having this insurance. So as more and more people started to opt out, the risk pool became unhealthier and unhealthier, resulting in premiums having to be increased more and more. Luckily, some of this was mitigated by the fact that there were government subsidies that were able to cover some of the large price increases, premium increases for some people. And that meant that those people could afford to stay even though they couldn't cover the full cost of the premium increases. And this meant that the risk pool overall wasn't completely overtaken by unhealthy people. The need to avoid adverse selection or this death spiral for actuaries is really, really important and it's a big part of their job. They need to be able to assess each risk accurately because if they don't, then they'll be underpricing those people or they'll be overpricing those people. And neither of those is really desirable. If they overprice, then they're pushing away healthy people and making it unattractive for people that are actually really healthy and would be good people to have in their 
their risk pool. If they underprice, then they're going to attract those really unhealthy people that they actually don't really want in their risk pool. So you don't want to overprice or underprice. You want to have things priced exactly as they should be. And that's what actuaries do. It's a constant challenge to make sure that each risk, each person is appropriately priced. But there's something that's making it even harder for actuaries to do this right now. And it's impacting almost every single actuarial position. To find out what it is and how actuaries are coping with it, make sure you go watch this video next. Thank you for staying to the end of today's video. Now, starting today, I thought it would be a neat idea to start doing a little bit something different at the end of the videos. So going forward, I'm going to include a short little story about something going on in my life just to help you connect with me better. And I guess my cat wants to get in on this too. So it could be something exciting that happened that week. It could be something just funny or just a small little tidbit of something that happened in my life so that we can connect a little more beyond the usual content. I know sometimes it's hard for you to get to know me more. So I thought this would be a good way to do that. And who knows, maybe you'll find something in these stories that is relatable to you. So let's start off with today's story. Well, this week I actually got in my first little, I don't know, my first car accident kind of, but not really. I've been in a few car accidents. They weren't my fault. Well, actually one of them might have been. When I was first starting driving, I accidentally backed up into another car that was behind me, but we won't count that. Anyway, I accidentally hit a raccoon this week and it, well, I felt really, really bad. I am an animal lover and this raccoon, well, I was going kind of fast. I was on a back road, so I was going 80 kilometers an hour, um, or maybe a little more. Um, the raccoon kind of ran in front of me, stopped, looked at me, and did not make it back the other way, unfortunately. So I'll insert some footage of the damage, and actually I decided that I was just gonna go fix my car with some duct tape because, well, I think I'm probably gonna get a new car pretty soon and I don't want to spend the 3,000 or whatever it might be to get a new bumper or replace my bumper. So I'm gonna be one of those cars for a little while that has a duct taped bumper. I did get the blue duct tape so that it kind of blended in with my car. And afterwards you can really not notice too much unless you're, well, if you look at it, you can notice, but who's looking anyway? Well. That's my story for this week. Have you ever run into an animal? I hope not, but if you have, let me know down in the comments because I'm feeling really, really, really bad about it. See you next week, everyone.